Now that we've looked into these different types of, uh, of circuits a bit, um, it's time to start investigating the properties of those circuits further. So not just what they're named, um, and not just how the resistors are arranged, but also uh, what's going on with the current and what's going on with the voltage in these circuits. Uh, in particular, we're going to look at uh, the voltage as it changes in, um, in a series circuit, and we're going to look at the current as it changes in a parallel circuit. Um, we could certainly look at voltage in a parallel circuit or current in a series circuit as well, and actually that'll be a part of our, uh, our, our process here. So, uh, first off, looking at how much of a voltage drop we have across each of these two resistors. Now, remember that this whole circuit, it functions as a cycle where our battery or our, our voltage source here, it acts as like a pump pumps up the, in the analogy we talked about it, pumping water back up to this top tank so it has more gravitational potential energy. Well here it's pumping uh, electrons up, or it's pumping charges up so they have a higher electric potential energy. Again, it's not quite a, a great analogy there because it's not really the same charges that are going through each time it's different charges, but that's, that's okay. It works out the same way for, uh, for the calculations. So this pumps everything up by a certain amount of energy, a certain amount of energy per charge, which we call potential, uh, electric potential, and so the amount that that changes is the potential difference or the voltage of the battery. So this is a 1.5 volt battery. It pumps up charges by 1.5 joules for every coulomb of charge that comes through there. Now, if, uh, if we had a situation where, say, this battery was pumping th things up by 1.5 volts, but then there was some situation where the, the circuit wasn't causing a drop of 1.5 volts, then these electrons, they would just keep reaching higher and higher and higher electric potential energy, which would be awesome because we've just created an infinite energy creation device, which doesn't exist energy has to be conserved. So however much energy is, um, uh, is gained by going through this battery, we have to lose that same amount of energy. Or when we talk about energy per charge, we have to lose that same electric potential along the way. Now these wires that are drawn here, just the straight lines, we assume that those have zero resistance. And so that means that none of our energy is lost on the wires. None of our voltage is lost on the wires. Really, it's, it's not quite true, but it's pretty close. And so it's, it's a decent assumption. So our energy, or our voltage, energy per charge, is lost at this resistor and at this resistor. So we know that uh, in order for energy to be conserved here, conservation of energy says that V which is the voltage gained by this uh, uh, by charges because of the battery has to be equal to oops, V has to be equal to the voltage drop across resistor one. We'll call that V one plus the voltage drop across the second resistor V two. So if this is a say a five volt battery, maybe it drops two volts here and three volts here, or maybe one volt here and four volts here but it has to go back to its, its starting energy, its starting voltage um, along the way there. So whatever these two values are, whatever the voltage drops across those are, we have to have this relationship true. That's true regardless of this amount of current, or regardless of this amount of voltage, regardless of the values for the resistance, the total energy change for one cycle has to be zero because otherwise we're creating or destroying energy and violating thermodynamics again, and, we, well, we don't, we don't do that. So these two voltage drops have to add up to this voltage increase. Now, in order to figure out how much of a voltage drop we have for each one, we'll just use Ohm's law, V equals, oops, V equals IR. And since there's no split in this circuit, it's a series circuit, the current going through each point here is going to be the same. If it weren't, then those charges would be created or destroyed. That violates the conservation of charge. Again, we don't do that. So if I want to know what V1 is, 
That'll just be the current going through that resistor, which is just I, times the resistance, which is R1. And if I want to know what V2 is, that'll be the current going through there, I, times the resistance, R2. And then we'll find in, in later calculations that V1 plus V2, they always add up to give us this value V. And we'll figure out how, to, how the voltage would be to make that happen. For now, we're looking at the ratio of these two. So the ratio would be V1 over V2. And V1 is I times R1. V2 is I times R2. So the I's cancel. And we've got the ratio of the voltages, V1 to V2, is R1 to R2. So, if this is a bigger resistor than this one, then more of our voltage drop is going to happen here than happens here. If this is twice as much resistance, say this is 100 ohms, this one's only 50 ohms, then the voltage drop here will be twice what it is here. So maybe we have a, a battery here that's a 3-volt battery, and we'll say this is uh, twice the resistance of this one. So 3 volts we have to lose altogether. We have to have the, the voltage drop of this one twice of what this one is. The only way that works is if we lose 2 volts across this resistor and 1 volt across this resistor. So again, our total voltage has to be equal to the 3 volts from the battery. And the voltage drop across this resistor that's twice as resistive has to be twice what uh, the voltage drop across this one is. So 2 and 1 is the only pair of numbers that works there. So whatever the ratio of resistances is, that's equal to the ratio of voltage drops. Now if we go to the parallel circuit, um, we see here that uh, we know our current gets split up. We'll call that I1 and I2. Leave my resistors again. Call this one R1 and R2. And those each have some value, maybe the same value, maybe a different one. Either way, this process works. And we want to find the ratio of currents across these. Well, one thing that we see is that between this end of, uh, of those resistors and this end of those resistors uh, we have these two resistors and on the other end we have just the battery and wires. Now there's no voltage drop across the wires so the entire voltage drop ha has to happen from between this point and this point. What that tells us is that the voltage drop across each of these resistors uh, is would, would have to be exactly equal to the voltage increase from this battery. So we drop here by V volts, and we drop here by V volts. So whether that current takes this path or whether it takes this path, we have to have still that same energy conserved idea. So it increases by, say, 5 volts here, comes over and let's say we look at the current that comes down this way, has to decrease by 5 volts on this resistor. And go back, and then we'll say look at the other current, the one that goes across this way, goes up by 5 volts at the battery, has to go down by 5 volts here. And then back to the battery, up by 5 volts, down by 5 volts, up by 5 volts, down by 5 volts, up by 5 volts, down by 5 volts. So each of these resistors has a voltage drop of V. So if I want to know the current, we're still using V equals I R here. We're just rearranging it. So I is equal to V over R. If I want to know the current for the first resistor, it'll be V over R1. And the current for the second resistor, uh, one's getting a little out of control. Let's try that again. Uh, for the second resistor is going to be V over R2. And so if I wanted to know the ratio of I1 to I2, how much current goes through each one, that'd be V over R1 divided by V over R2. 
If we divide by a fraction, we can just multiply by the reciprocal, so that'd be V over R1, and then times the reciprocal of this, that'd be R2 over V. Our V's cancel, and we find that the ratio of I1 to I2, the current through resistor 1 to the current through resistor 2, is equal to the value of resistance 2 over resistance 1. Notice that these are switched. Here 1's on top, 2's on bottom. Here 2's on top, 1's on bottom. What does that mean? Well, it means that the current through resistor 1 is going to be maximized when R2 is bigger than R1. And the current through I2, or the, the current through resistor 2, is going to be maximized when R2 is small and R1 is big. So let's think about this conceptually. You might have heard the path, uh, the idea of the path of least resistance. Now, well, that's a little bit misleading. You might think, well, maybe we have 100 ohms here and 200 ohms here. This one is less resistance, so let's just send all the current through that way. It doesn't work that way. The current gets split up. But the one that has less resistance is going to get more of the current. More of the charges pass through that point. If we go back to our, our water analogy, think about here uh, a stream that diverges into to two different paths. And one is a really wide path and one is a really narrow path. We're not going to have as much water going through the narrow path. And that'd be the one with the high resistance. Still some, but not as much as we have going through the wide path, the one with the least resistance. So let's say that we have uh, R1 is twice as resistive, has twice as many ohms of resistance as R2. That would mean that R2 gets twice as much current as R1 does. And so if we figure out the overall current here, we know that it's going to get split up so that overall a third of it goes through R1 and two-thirds of it goes through R2 to make sure, make sure that uh, that ratio is maintained. This ratio right here. Later on, uh, in our next few videos, we're going to um, uh, put some values in with these and, and look at, again, these more complex systems. But let's go ahead and take a, take a look at, uh, at one system right now. We'll say that um, R1 is equal to uh, about 250 ohms, and R2 is equal to 750 ohms. And we'll say that our current, our total current, um, is going to be equal to uh, about 4 amps. And we want to know how much of that current gets into I1, how much gets into I2. <coughs> so up here, this I is going to be 4 amps. And then our two currents, those are just split off from this initial 4 amps. So I know that I1 and I2 have to add up to 4 amps. So I can write that out. I1 plus I2 has to equal 4 amps. And then I have this other relationship that uh, relates the currents and the resistances. So we'll say I1 over I2 has to be equal to R2, so it's 750 ohms over 250 ohms, which is just 3. So I1 over I2 has to equal 3, or I could rearrange that. I1 has to equal 3 times I2. Okay, so the, the resistor number 2 has 3 times the resistance, so that means resistor number 1 is going to get 3 times the current of resistor 2. Okay, so now we can take this value and substitute, or this equation, and substitute it back in up here. And we get, uh, instead of I1, I'm going to put that in as 3I2 plus I2 equals 4 amps. So 4I2 is equal to 4 amps, so then I2 has to equal 1 amp. And since I1 is 3 times that, I1 would have to be 3 amps. So they add up to 4. This one is 3 times what this one was. That satisfies both of these requirements for the currents.